Oh, goodness, we're up. <laughs> ah! They can see us right now. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> <Dang it. laughs> well, hi, everybody. We were. <laughs> I gave Morgan, <laughs> I was trying to mess with the layout, so I guess we're live. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> can they hear us? Uh, yes, they can hear us. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, good. Welcome to Behind the Curtain, where Morgan and I sit here and just wait. <laughs> we were actually trying to pull up the chat here, so I don't see anybody's um, oh, name strange. yet. Here we go. Hi see, to El Eldritch Witch. Hi, Bent Wookie. Hi, Shiny 8 Boo. Hi. Hi, Red 3658. All... Apparently, I'm a little quiet. Let me see if I can adjust that. Oh, I can I adjust I you. I can adjust okay. you. Okay. There you go. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> how's, how's it now? Welcome to the Dungeon <laughs> Cooldown, where we Woo! are always prepared. <laughs> Happy Monday, everybody. <laughs> oh, goodness. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Um, yeah. Wow. Uh, we're back with another edition and Jessica and I are here to join you uh, to talk about, you know, we've got a lot to debrief and discuss from last week. We also have a few Please things don't. we discussed for this week. We're headed back uh -huh. to I, Jeff is, Jeff is back and we're all terrified. <laughs> uh, I, but we'll we'll talk we'll talk uh, strategically about when we get to that, when we get to that part of the show, I think. Yeah, for sure. But uh, but yeah, everybody, this is our this is our companion show, The Dungeon Cooldown, which is supported by our amazing Patreon. Please visit patreon.com slash the dungeon run if you haven't already. We got some amazing things going on there. Uh, Jared just posted some Mother's Day poems. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jeff posted the stat sheets to the demons that we fought in the sewer. Uh, uh, or you don't know about that part. No. <laughs> Spoiler, we fought demons in the sewer. No, I think maybe, I think maybe you figured that out. Uh, that's all right. That's, that, that's not really the well, spoiler part of what I did know us. about some of the creatures, at least, okay, good. because okay, good. Hema was there before we, we got separated. True. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's lots of cool stuff going on in the Patreon always. Um, and not, not to mention the, the VOD of this show, which goes up on Tuesdays, 24 hours after we air every week. Uh, so yay. But yeah, how I do. Doing, I, I do want to shout out a couple more people in chat here um, because we're just so grateful that you show up for us. Amazing. Um, so who else do we have here? Grecken, you oat heart. Yay. Um, a concerned Eldritch citizen Witch, of mine. David Jen Pro, always bringing it. Uh, we love you folks. Drew Bonner all... Music, Cheetah R, Madamus 3, Borkware Mark D, Witch Space, Hedonist Ogre, Redlands 22. <laughs> Hedonist Ogre, well. Uh, Sawyer Wolf, <laughs> MT Daywall, Sea King, Fate Monger, Mr. Mac, Donane, Whisper Josephine, Bent Wookie, Rabbit Attack, Goat Brandy LA. Wow. I love these folks. Passioned and Visioned. Wow, that's a, wow. That's a, that's a deep name. Passion. I like the names. I look. I love all the names. I love all the names. I really like the names that have like a visual, like really you can picture them. Like hedonist ogre is definitely one that I'm like, <laughs> wow, that 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 paints a picture in my mind. <laughs> uh, like like whisper Josephine. Yes, <laughs> Josephine. Whisper. <laughs> uh, so goodness. what are we what are we what are we doing today? I don't know. I mean, no, I, I do know. We, it's like, <laughs> We're just gonna yeah. Let's just shout out everybody's username for an yeah, hour yeah. straight. That's that's that that'll be great. Now, um, but yeah, I mean, so we've been busy certainly. What was your weekend like? I know you've got you've got a new puppy at home. How's everything? I do. He's right there. He's yeah. He's seeing and, and Pebbles and Ollie getting along okay. Yes. If anybody follows me on Instagram, I post almost daily now their shenanigans oh. because they fight with each other in the cutest way, and it makes my heart so happy. <laughs> That's so sweet. I also am dealing with an older cat, younger cat, not younger dog situation right now. But they're getting along okay. Jack Jack is putting up with Betty. Betty loves him so much and wants to be his best friend. Aww. And he's good He's good with it most of the time. And then every now and then he's like, all right, all right, get off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's Pebbles too. <laughs> it's like, okay, get away from me. Uh, but it helps, it helps. I think that Pebbles is still larger than Ollie, at least for yes. now. Will, will well, she always be? I don't know. Well, 
first of all, I think she, I'm hoping that she shrinks because she's running around a lot more. But <laughs> right. Ollie, I guess, I've had him for three or four weeks and now and he hasn't grown at all. So mm. uh, I don't I don't know if he's gonna get any bigger. Maybe the Chihuahua in him is strong and he's not oh. gonna, he's keep just gonna him. stay small. Keep him on the, keep him on the smaller side, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Yeah, but um, let's see. You also uh, had a side D and D adventure yes. uh, on, on Hello Good Berry last week. Yes. Yes, we did. We had a lot of I watchers to, show up. I need to watch it. Your makeup is amazing slash a little terrifying. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, I had a I had a number of people ask me if that was a filter. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And uh, what a what a great compliment because it uh, definitely yeah, right? was not. Uh, that was that was using my old. Ben Nye kit nice. from college. Oh, ben wow. Nye, for those of you who don't know, is the um, the makeup kit that they require box. you get. Does uh, it still come in the in the rectangular box? I did when I bought it. It's no longer okay. in that box. Thank God. That's uh, no, don't be don't be using ten year old makeups on your face, everybody. I you know or however old years and years old. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's not a side adventure, Hadrian. Next year, absolutely. That's what I did. Okay. I I used the old makeup. Careful. <laughs> um, I do want to show you uh, this this uh, this side adventure. This is a uh, Alex. Yeah. Did um, featuring uh, one Katie Michaels. As yes, well. okay, uh, Katie Michaels from the Dungeon Run. Our Lily yes. Dumblestuck played a oh, I've, I've heard of that show. Eldrin Shadow Monk named Snoop. And um, interesting. This is kind of what it looks like if you're interested. I'm trying to find a bit with Katie. Do yes, and Alex. Funny. Alex is DMing. Yes, and she's and she's wonderful. All um, homebrew. Wow, very cool. Yes, I'm very proud of this overlay as well because it's so beautiful. And, and our friend Avril as well, who we did a, an amazing uh, session of uh, Alice is Missing yes. a, couple, a couple months back. Yes, loved that. Yeah, and uh, Yaya up in the top right. Mm -hmm. Wait, which way can I point that way? That way? It's opposite for me. <laughs> she plays no. Tiana in Damsel's Dice and Everything Nice, which I know oh, cool. a few of watchers have, have um, been keeping yeah. up on as well over on Pixel Circus. And uh, Mariah is in the was on the national touring show of Mean Girls playing Regina George. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. I forget. I forget that Mean Girls is a musical now. <laughs> right? So this this campaign, um, yeah, just let me toot my own horn here for a second. Please. Uh, this campaign, <laughs> again, away. homebrewed by Alex, took wow. place, um, takes place where all of the characters are going to a magical college at the top of a mountain. Nice. So it's kind of like Harry Potter vibes. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah no, I, I definitely need to check it out. I need to uh, give it a listen. And it's available on the Hello Goodberry YouTube. Yes, uh, and on our Twitch page until it expires. A uh, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, but yes, uh, so check that out if you haven't. Um, we also finished our two shot last week with the amazing Amy Vorpal and Satine Phoenix. We love them both. Uh, Amy Vorpal doing an all time appearance on the Dungeon Cooldown. We're, we're having to follow Amy's appearance la from last week when she sang not one, not two, but three different songs. I know. I was teching that one and uh, yes. I was like, Sheesh. Okay. <laughs> and Jared's just weeping. Morgan, what the <laughs> heck are we gonna do this week? Well, uh, I can I... I can play a song. I can make up a song on my ukulele. I have no <laughs> musical instruments around. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you can just go. You can just do I some could, weird beatboxing. I could act something for you. <laughs> you could oh, act something. <laughs> I could act something. Do some thespianism. That's right. Oh gosh, that gets you arrested some places. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, so the candle keep deconstruction was so much fun, and we're so grateful to to Amy and Satine for coming along on that adventure. I think I'd said this. It, this was something that we wanted to do uh, that we had in mind, and then um, making a real lemon out of lem lemonade out of lemons uh, situation that we were so grateful we were able to kind of quickly put it together once it became obvious that Jeff needed to step away for a couple weeks, and uh, and it went so great. And and having Satine as our first ever guest player was huge for me. Like I I was I was so excited that not only to have a guest DM, but I, I you know fans of the show will know that we never had a guest player sit down and actually be with us at the table, and that was. All from the moment that we started doing this on our own, that was very much a yeah. like we really want to get guest players in here. 
And Satine, to her credit and to our, to our, we're so grateful that she immediately was like, yes, let's do it. And she had so much fun. I, I can, she, you could tell. And then she reiterated to me multiple times afterwards. She's like, I had so much fun. That was amazing. That makes my heart so happy. We, yes. that, that's all we can ask, all we can hope for is yes. that we have fun and yeah. that that translates over to when we have guests come on the show as well. Yes. Yeah. Well, and you know, it's, it's hard. I mean, a, a lot of what we do here is kind of in, it's kind of internal and we know how we feel about it and we're every, and but we've also been doing it a while and we're like, you know, our show's pretty good. Our show's pretty good. <laughs> and you know, we're pretty great. It's like, we have fun and our people and our, our, our audience has, has a lot of fun too. It is, it is nice to, to bring in people who you respect and who you like a lot and they show up and they go, that was great. And we're like, yes, yes, it was yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, like we're doing something, we're doing something right. Yeah, yeah, that was that was nice to kind of play host uh, to to Amy again, but also to Satine, who was who was uh, so incredible. Mm -hmm. um, and Amy again as a DM, I I love how she leans into the bananas of it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anything goes. <laughs> I I need to read the rest of the Candlekeep mysteries or play them, uh, preferably play them. Uh, <laughs> Um, because I, something tells me that none of them will quite be like candle keep deconstruction. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we're going to go through some of the, uh, mm -hmm. questions that you all put in the Patreon. Yep. Uh, but when that's done, we're going to go through the candle keep mystery, which you saw for a second because, uh, pff, guys, between the two <laughs> different OBS programs, the, the buttons work differently, and that is why we were live today before I was ready. <laughs> I clicked the wrong thing. Um, be okay. But we do have this screen up uh, yes. to go through Amy's adventure and so kind of see yeah. where things went Where we differ, where, where, mm -hmm. or where things, what, what we missed maybe a little bit of. Um, what, uh, yeah, I think that'll be fun. And maybe some, some other hidden Easter eggs that we did hit upon, or maybe that we just blew right past. <laughs> um, I know, I know for instance, like, it's so funny, the little things, how big a difference that they play. Ron rolling that, I think it was Ron, Ron rolling that like 30 on an Arcana check or on an intelligence check, uh, right away gave away that the rocket ship angle i i know some people have told me that like they didn't know about the rocket ship angle when they've played this adventure oh. until like almost the end and so finding that finding that page in the in the bottom of the bottom of the barn door uh that says like set rockets if you don't know that you're that that you know imagine like you're like, wait a minute, mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. uh, but the fact that Ron like immediately rolled that 30 or that early on, and it was just sort of like, oh, well, yeah, with a third, because it actually does say in the adventure, if they beat a, tw it's a DC 25, like Arcana or investigation check. And uh, and sure enough, yep, Ron, Ron, Ron got that figured out real fast. Uh, I mean, but, and it helped us have sort of a sense of urgency as well, that there was a rocket ship. Sure. I'm seeing yes. a lot of Frick love in the chat. Thank you, there Doug in Texas and you, Ocart. That it. is some of our, IT. that is one of our questions that we can get into. Uh, Shiny 8-Bit Boo on Patreon, oh, thank you, Shiny, uh, asked, how fun was it coming up with your Candlekeep characters and what were some inspirations behind them? I mean, specifically for you. I mean, we saw your inspiration. You you formed it here on yes. the Dungeon Cooldown. Yes, two weeks ago, Katie That's and right. I came yeah. on the Dungeon Run, I mean, and Dungeon the Cooldown. the sisters were born. Yes, and with the chat, <laughs> we came up with uh, the Frangelica sisters. And really, I think that the name of the game was just Chaos. Uh, yes. <laughs> it, because with these one shots or the, or the shorter campaigns, you right. can make these characters that don't have a ton of backstory because you're not really going to get to it. So just play yeah. a big personality. And right. um, it's actually how Fahima was born, too. Mm. She was born for a one shot, uh, oh, one shot adventure. Yeah. Uh, but what was the original yeah. question? The, what was the when inspiration? I, how, what, yeah, inspiration behind some of the characters and, and how fun was it to come up with them, uh, with, with the specific ca ca well, characters for this adventure? It's fun because you may have noticed with my latest characters that I've started to get into really like uh, non-traditional Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> races. Like my grandma yes. is a satyr, uh, which, <laughs> which it really is outside the box for me because normally I play... Uh, humans, Genasi, sure. which are you know half human, 
uh, yeah, I'm very partial to humans. So yeah, I think maybe I'm just getting goofier. Yeah. I don't know. And I also knew that this adventure was took place in a library, a place with books, and um, I. Amy, so it was probably going to go off the rails a little bit. And I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't maximizing for that at all. I thought it would be, sure. it would be more fun if I just played whatever I wanted and just saw how that character fit into the world. And I'm glad that uh, despite Frick being quite the violent little beast uh, that she was received well. She was, like after, she after, was after, immediately a legend. After cutting the human in half, I was like, you know, if Vehima did that, she'd be in a lot of trouble. Spend the rest of the session talking about it. No, yeah, okay. but if but Frick did it, <laughs> she's a Moving she's on. a chaotic barbarian and we're like oh we that's get right. it we get it that's yeah. what she do yeah she cut people do. up i think yeah i uh one shots versus continuous campaigns are so different the more the more i do like i first of all just from the dming angle of things um i think one shots are probably harder to dm or one or two shots are probably harder to dm than longer campaigns mm. I, like i I've not DM'd a lot of one shots, and there's so much pressure right towards the end of them to be like, "All right, wrap this up somehow," uh, you know, or or you just have to be ready to parachute out of things almost immediately because you know, well, they took three times longer to do this part, but then they blasted through this part. Yeah, I think that's really tricky sometimes. But creating characters, I. I, I like like a lot of people. I I create characters, you know, when I'm bored sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I I do um, I do create like well that could be a fun like one shot character. And then there are a few that I will bookmark and go like okay if and when I'm doing another long campaign, this is someone that that I could really you know bite into as yeah. far as like journey and arc yeah. and what their instincts might be. Um, itch, I think I could go either way with, uh, to be honest, I, itch was a fast, uh, creation for me because I looked at the party balance and I was like, okay, this is everybody. We should, we should have a rogue. And I was like, oh, I don't play a lot of rogues. Okay. You know, and, um, and I like tieflings. I don't play them that often, but, uh, I, I liked playing a pretty chaotic, but kind of slick rogue character. Um, to kind of because I knew I knew I knew Helvengard was coming to the party. <laughs> Jared immediately was like, uh, I'll, "I'll bring back Helvengard," and we're like, "Okay, cool." And so I was like, "Well, I, I already wanted to set up kind of a foil there," and uh, and it just became you know a smooth spy assassin. I didn't get to play around too much with like the new subclasses. He was a assassin rogue shadow sorcerer. You know, I was gonna say I don't think we saw enough. Mm. of itch i don't think itch really got a chance to shine with your rogue abilities there were some more things that i could have done that um that i th could have been cool moves that i would have possibly not allowed others to shine so i kind of mm. held back um literally like so he has a dagger of blind sight so and Ooh. he can and he's a tiefling so he can cast darkness uh, me with casting darkness again, what are you gonna do? But uh, but literally, so he doesn't need to see through the darkness. He can just hang out in there and use his blind sight to mess up anybody that walks into, you know, and as they're blind and have no idea what's going on, he doesn't need to see. Um, but if I cast, especially since we are in such small rooms, I'm like, if I cast darkness in here, no one's gonna be able to see anything. So I don't wanna do that right now. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, 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 you know this, this conversation is actually bringing up something for me, uh, which is the parallels between these characters and our normal D&D characters, because I, or yeah. dun dungeon run characters, because I feel like Itch was still, he still had this like, inquisitiveness um mm -hmm. the kind of like brain that james has i was like okay that's that's morgan that's morgan's <laughs> through bit. line that he has in all of his characters and my through line that showed up was well i see that the dm is making these creatures submissive so i don't think i want to mm -hmm. kill the submissive creatures <laughs> right. Right. when I, my character was, probably would be like too, for sure uh, you know, the, ah, I'm, 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 I'm fully raging. I'm just gonna hack at anything that's in front of me. But the player mind was like, 
But why is she saying they're submissive, though? That just feels gonna, like a cue. It's going to feel kind of bad if we destroy all these things that are making these cute sounds. Yeah. <laughs> Cute sounds are a big cue when your DM gives you, it's like, oh, and it makes this little chirping motherly sound. You're like, oh man, I don't want to kill this thing. <laughs> but that's perfectly fine. I mean, to have a through line with your characters is just, it's your personality, you know? It's like yeah. when you see yeah. uh, Leonardo DiCaprio in any role, he has some kind of through line, which is, um, yeah. I don't know, this like kind of a... Uh, doesn't he, doesn't he kind of feel like an underdog, despite how outrageously handsome he is? I think so. I think that's something. I mean, He's like really relatable, you know? I heard There's... somebody explain it to me once a long time ago. This is one of the better acting lessons that I've ever heard. Thank uh, you for the which... gift sub, Changebox. Hey, thank you, Changebox. Um, there, someone referred to it once as like, there are two types of, of characters who are, there are stars and there are character actors. And they're like, and one is not better than the other. You need to get rid of that, you know? Mm. And and I agree with this. It's like, when you're watching Tom Cruise or George Clooney or Leonardo DiCaprio most of the time, you never really forget that you're watching Tom Cruise or George Clooney or Leonardo, or uh, Julia yeah. Roberts is Absolutely. a perfect example as well. And- Kate but, Winslet. Yes, uh, but they are still playing it truthfully. <laughs> And you're still in, and you're still invested in them because you're still believing them in this situation. I'm invested 100 percent in all of the Mission Impossible movies. I'm still watching Tom Cruise, but I'm like, I'm in, you know, and <laughs> and that it doesn't matter. So you're still invested completely, but it's it's um, you know, yeah, you're like, but it's still George Clooney. I'm watching George Clooney and Michael Clayton, or in you know any of the number any of the Oceans movies, for instance. Uh, but the the character actor side is the like don't look at me look at this completely different person that isn't me, and um, Joaquin Phoenix. And I, Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, uh, Paul Giamatti can be like that a, a lot. Mm. Um, uh, yes, yeah, tons of people. Oh, who's the guy, the 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 crony bad guy in the in the Harley Quinn movie to uh, Ewan oh, McGregor? Chris is that Chris his name? Chris Messina. Let me look him he was up. On, he was on the Mindy Project. Yeah. Yes! Yeah. Oh great. my God! Yeah. Seeing him in that movie, I was like, what? Yeah, who are you? Yeah, I, I did not know who it was for a few minutes. I would I not like, have what? taken him as a character actor, but there no, he was. it's true. He's, very, he's, he's so handsome. Yes. Um, but yeah, our own our own beloved Todd Stashwick is a definite character actor as well. Mm. Todd Stashwick showed up in that the Ben Affleck basketball movie last year, The Way Back, which is a great oh, movie. Oh, really? Watched it yet. I'm gonna look him up. Todd and Stashwick, to the, and what Todd, the Way Back? The Way Back. And Todd plays Ben Affleck's brother in law, and he's just this kind of dad. <laughs> and you're like, wait a minute, is that Todd? <laughs> like, it did take me a second. Uh, Where yeah. is he? I can't find an image of him. Maybe on IMDb? Let's he almost he, he looks like such a norm core version of himself. <laughs> but yes, there's, I highly recommend there's uh, the way back. Got to be something on his IMDb, right? Oh, for sure. We're going to look it up. I'm going to show find you it. if I can find, find the it. way back. But um <laughs> yeah, the characters as a whole, I mean, just to kind of go back to like the one shot versus lengthy things, like for some, for one instance, I didn't feel like Crow was going to be right for this adventure. One, it's out of the Feywild. I don't know if Crow ever leaves the Feywild, to be honest. I kind of <laughs> invented him to be like very set in his ways and like he is created for this adventure. This is his home. He protects his home and he's trying to do the best for it. I was like, Mm, and also and also just having a centaur in a library well it might have been fun <laughs> I, I didn't know where I was gonna go with it so I was looking to to branch out somewhere and also I feel like crow's journey I didn't know what else to do with him um at, at after the end of the mending of magic I feel like that was his story so I was kind of like you know that's sometimes it sometimes feels weird to pull certain characters and just drop them into other things so I didn't have yeah. a whole lot I didn't have a whole lot left to to say with Crow, which maybe if I come up with another with another arc for him, maybe maybe I'll maybe that'll change. But um, but yeah, couldn't find him. Couldn't find Todd in the in the in the IMDb did not have screenshots of him and neither Got did Google. It. Well, he's so, in it a bunch, so do check out the way back and find our somebody screenshot it and put it in the Discord. <laughs> yes, he's great. 
Um, I think he's married to Michaela Watkins in the movie. Is that a woman who plays his wife? Uh, hey, PH Mike, how are you? Um, oh, I always say Fimic. Finnick. He, I have asked him multiple times, how do you say your name? And he's like, whatever. <laughs> I prefer to mispronounce Fimic. usernames. Fimic. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. I like the, the <laughs> charm to that. Um, but yeah. Do you have another okay. question from the Patreon? So here's a good one from Michael Donato. Which Candlekeep character do you wish was with you in Olsvach? Uh I thought about this one, but I, I'm, curi I'm curious about your answer. In Olsvach, definitely not Frick. Not Frick. Uh, she would blow their cover immediately. Uh... Itch might be a little redundant in Olsvach. <laughs> yeah, because we already have a rogue. Yeah, and, and, and a whole band of his rogue friends as well. Hmm. We have, oh, we have Ego. Ego. Ego, Ego could be used. Ego, divination is useful everywhere. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And we have uh, Crick and Hell. And Vlanya. Ooh, and Vlanya. Ooh. Are we talking about the, the, the PCs or the NPCs? No, I, I, think, Just PCs? I think the question was which of our Candlekeep characters, yeah, which of the six PCs would Vlanya. we like to just, yep, I, that was my total 100%. Runner up <laughs> would be, um, well, we can't have Hell me. because he's like a cop and they don't like cops. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> no. No one likes cops. No. Held and uh, would be completely lost. In I would say maybe Crick only because druids are always useful. Uh, but yeah, again, a, a little crossover with Fahima's abilities. So yeah, uh, Vlanya, because I feel like she would walk into any Just, situation, yeah. whether that's high society or low society. Yep. And they're Agreed. like, oh my God, who are you? I will do anything you want. 100%. That was absolutely my thought. I was like, Vlanya, I would love, please, please. In fact, in fact, Satine, are you free this week? <laughs> we might need Satine, your help. <laughs> we need you to save the entire party, if you can. Jason Charles Miller's in the chat. Hey, dude, what's up? Oh, hey, what's up? Oh, my God, you. look at your little emo. It's so cute. Yay, the, 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 the gloriousness of the goatee in the emote. But was yeah, she an I, eloquence Bard. What? what? No, I don't think I wrote. Whispers Bard. Whispers Bard. Okay. Ooh. She so a, she's like. Um, uh, she was an enchantment wizard. Varys. Whispers Bard. Pretty sure. Yes. I think she was like six, six levels Whispers Bard, three levels enchantment wizard. I don't remember. We were at level nine. We oh, were. Yeah, we were. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. Did you go all? You went all nine barbarian. Yeah. I I, I kept things easy for myself. Yeah. I, I didn't yeah. even pick feats beyond the telepathic thing because i yeah just wanted to yeah keep it with one shots when i do make it too complicated i like don't use all of my abilities and it's a waste of time so i might as well oh just maximize God. the simple ones that i can use that's the other thing i've learned with one shots is don't hold anything back like literally if you've got something cool use it <laughs> like use it fast because you probably won't get another chance oh gamer yeah. share has a picture of todd stashwick uh, if you do, put it, go ahead and put it in, uh, do we have a cooldown thread? I don't, I don't know, I do. mean, I don't know if we do have a cooldown thread, that's a good put idea. Put it, put it in, uh, put it in Fahima and I'll see it. Dyson Cape's And I'll pull it up thread. on stream. Um, but yeah, I, uh, it was also, it was, it was very cool to play, uh, Jason Charles Miller, you may know about this, it was very cool to play with, uh, Satine's character, Vlanya, who I've seen in a bunch of other shows. <laughs> she plays, she plays Vlanya a lot, and so it was like, it was fun to be a part of Vlanya's greater story, you know? I saw her play Vlanya at a live show with Matthew Lillard and, uh, Kate Welch and Deborah Ann Wool. Oh, wow. Uh, like two years ago. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, and she she was so much fun. And uh, we'd love to have her back another time for sure. Okay, um, Gamer Share sent over this uh, screenshot of that's right. Todd. I'm pulling it up. Where did you find this? this, this is this from the movie? <laughs> How come I couldn't find it? The heck, yeah. my sleuthing skills are, are bad. Mean, did, did, you just, did you just Google Todd's Dashwick the way back? Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. All right, pulling it right. up here. Like, give me one second. He'll be in there. But it's a great movie about high school basketball and dealing with the struggles of alcoholism. If it doesn't sound like those things go together, I swear to you, they do. You know, <laughs> I saw one trailer for this, uh, 
and it looked really bad. It was like just <laughs> so cringy. And then uh, I saw another trailer like weeks later, and they must have just completely overhauled the entire thing because it uh, they'll often do actually yeah, looks interesting. Run, they'll find like actually being more successful with this audience, so try that. Yeah, yeah the first one was see- like more pandering to like the, the I think the Christian audience maybe. Mm, could be which sure. didn't work for me. Yeah, but there was the uh, I think it's it's a lot of Todd Todd Stashwick looking disappointed at. <laughs> <Ben> <laughs> <Affleck>. <laughs> Because Ben Affleck looks, Ben Affleck, very handsome guy, looks terrible throughout most of this movie. <laughs> no, okay, yeah. here we go. This is uh, this is oh, our Todd. Oh, here we go. Yep, yep. There we go. Wait a minute. Is that what? Is, is this that, from the movie? I don't, I don't know if that's from the way back. I don't think that is. No, this that's older. Oh, it's a general one from his IMDb. Okay, this isn't Dang from it. the way back. All right, well, we we got to see Todd's <laughs> face, which we enjoy. We love, we love, we always love seeing Todd's face. <laughs> we we enjoy Todd's face. <laughs> Todd, I really hope you're here for this. <laughs> oh, we had we had a second on a question. What guest DM would you like to play with you that you haven't had a chance to play with yet? Oh goodness gracious, uh, so many. Um, Deborah Ann Wool's amazing. Um, uh, I, I mean, mean, Matt I mean, Mercer. Matt, Matt Mercer. Matt Mercer's fantastic. Uh, let's see. Kelly D'Angelo. Kelly Lynn D'Angelo. Uh, yes, I've I've gotten to watch more of uh, what's it called? Dark Girls Got Glory. Girls Got Glory. That's right. Uh, is so fantastic. And uh, Mark Holmes, uh, Sherlock Holmes, is is fantastic as well. Uh, I really like. Uh, he's doing great work on Knights of Even Star right now. We got a BD of Walters in chat, yes, who's who's of course, GMing uh, Black Dice Society right now B. around Dave the DD channel. B Dave is incredible. Brennan Lee Mulligan's incredible. I, I still never met Brennan, uh, but I know we have a ton of mutual friends. Brennan and Becca Scott obviously know each other very well. Um, yes, that's true. Rod Ogden, MPB, Jared Kajak are DMs too. Oh yes, I <laughs> I I am not comfortable enough with my DMing skills yet uh, to to DM on on stream, especially I, us. Oh, you guys? <laughs> That's a whole thing. Uh, yes, it's a whole thing. <laughs> Hugh Laurie. Uh, any chance we can get Hugh Laurie to do a guest appearance? Uh, yeah, sure. you got to connect for us, change box. And, let's and a few, let's and, and a few bring him on. thousand dollars. <laughs> no, yeah, for sure. Although, have uh, you guys seen that? Um, uh, 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 oh, my God, I'm losing his name. The Jurassic Park. Uh, is is on a D and D show now? Oh, Jeff Goldblum. Yes, Jeff Goldblum yes. is on a on a podcast D and D show. Jeff Goldblum Amazing. is going to be on a on a D and D podcast. That's correct. D and D man, it's uh, it's uh, it's coming out, it's coming out swinging, big time for sure. Dark dice, yes. Yes, that's correct. Vin Diesel, um, I would love to have Vin Diesel on. Yes, any of the any of the D and D celebs, for I sure. would love. I mean, DMs. even the Stranger the Stranger Things kids would be fun. That's well, and David Harbour, who did a couple, he did that Stranger Things thing, and then he also did he he did one of the D and D live charity games with Karen Gillan. He's great. He he fell right into it. I, I was like, wow, this guy's either done this before or he's just as yes and as they come. Uh, he was terrific. Yeah. Felicia Day. It, Felicia Day, always. Of course. Great. Of course. Of course, I, more, of course. Uh, female. I like. I would like to more more. Uh, uh, Completely. Female DMs and female guest players. I, You've I played like. with with Kaylee Bray, right? Who's fantastic. Yes, Kaylee uh, Bray, uh, who GMs the Di- Damsel's Dice and Everything Nice stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah I nice. mean, I think. Yeah. I look. I'm excited for what other side things we can do going up. I'm. I'm extremely excited for our story and where it's going, and the fact that we get to continue our story is is the best. Um, but I also can't wait um, to see what what other what other side fun things we can do. The dungeon um, run is back this week, Speccio. Yes, the dungeon yes, run thanks. is back with Jeff. Uh, today's Monday, right? Yeah, two today's days. Monday. Wednesday episode 82 is coming. Specchio, if you're just now realizing we're back. Specchio, we've been back, baby. We've been back since March 31st. <laughs> um, so have, go go to our new YouTube. Hang on, hang on. We'll send the, go to the new YouTube and check out the new episodes. You've got three already new episodes of our main campaign waiting for you there. <laughs> this is so fun. I love, I love people discovering in real time that we're back. Dang right we're back. Indeed. Now I'm going to jump to another question, Uncle CW, Please. who always comes in with good questions, to go off this sort of character creation thing. Um, let's see. 
Uh, by the way, other guest DMs, Jason Charles Miller, if you're still in the chat, let's talk. Uh, I've seen you DM before, sir, and you are fantastic. Um, from Uncle CW, <laughs> to transition us a little bit into what's coming on Wednesday, what kind of backup characters would you guys make if somehow, I don't know, don't make it out of this situation? Well. <laughs> well. 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 Uh, I mean, you you could be dead already, and I, I wouldn't know that, actually. Well, we don't know, do we? <laughs> we, we don't, don't know, know, do we? Uh, okay, so we're going to be very careful. Thank you for the gift sub to uh, ch Change Box. Thank you. We, we appreciate Box your support. Gift subbing all show, and thank you. I don't, I have no idea what's going on with Fahima. I still have no idea. It's been, God, almost a month. Yeah. Uh, and, but it got bad. It got real bad last episode on our side of things. I won't say anything else. Um, and th things got real, real. And uh, uh, so, listen, we are high enough level now that if one of us were to die, they're very well, you could very well see an effort to revive Absolutely. one of us. Absolutely. Um, bye, Jason. Bye, Jason. Good to see you, man. Thanks for dropping in. Um, Lily, <laughs> I might bully Lily into taking and uh, raise the dead for <laughs> next, next level. Next uh, yeah, level. I really can't think of who would make a who would who would be a good fit in Fahima's absence. We definitely I guess I guess the role that she fills is the um the toolbox with the spells. Um, we both kind of fill that in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're both pretty versatile. You're a little more damage dealy with your spells and I'm a little more overall utility mm. with just with the sendings and with, you know, um uh, with dream and, and other such things, I'm like I'm like I'm like the cell phone. I'm I'm the communication specialist. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. That is true. <laughs> Which is important. Uh, Let me see. Yes. Let me. I want to take another look at. I guess I do have a lot of. I always feel like I don't have that many damage spells, but I guess I do. Ollie's popping up a little bit behind you, and it's oh, adorable. Hi, boy. Hi, boy. <laughs> oh, hi, buddy look at those ears. My little bunny boy. Thanks for the thanks for the bits, RPG Academy. Oh, we you love it. Cheer! Thank you so much. Uh, um, yeah, I guess I've, I've uh, con conjurations, um, but, but so dark even if magic. we can, look, things possibly could get bad enough that raise the raise the dead spell, I think it's raise the dead is the fifth level version, can't, because raise the dead, if you're ashes, for instance, if, if, uh, like, for instance, if when Jared almost got disintegrated, mm -hmm. um, that, that, the only thing that can save you from that is a true resurrection spell, which is either eighth or ninth level, which we are nowhere near getting yet. That would be very expensive. Very to expensive. Find to do <laughs> Trop cher. Yes. I think so. I have come up with backup characters at various parts of our story, just in case. Um, and I think this isn't just, I mean, almost all of them. Our clerics. <laughs> That's like not a spoiler at all. As I'm like, you know, I've been worried about the fact that we don't really have a cleric. I'm not um, worried about it. Katie heals us. Lily's yeah, a healer. It's not her. It's not her number one function though. Um, and and clerics have so many other things that yes, Lily is a good healer. She does. She does a very. Well, we good also job. have we have Ugo who can heal now too. We do have Ugo with a little bit of healing. And this Fahima can heal in a in a way that is not uh, tasteful but um it's <laughs> that's there true. It exists that's true <laughs> james learns he has an unknown twin sister jamie, jamie. <laughs> <laughs> i think it'd be fun to play somebody else in the campaign like i saw somebody say prim uh if i oh. played conroy for a bit that would Whoa. be fun really wow that'd be weird for me i don't know i don't know that would feel like extra pressure because I'm I'm have to, having to like morph into something that Jeff's already created. Could Conroy. be. Call, call, call uh, Roy. Yeah, call Roy. Call Roy. Yeah, just just be Liam Neeson, for really. For him. That's right. Hello. We we basically have Liam Neeson and Sean Connery in, in our in our uh, quests now. I'll I'll, I'll come mean, back and play the Ashen Mage. 
<laughs> hey guys, dare. what's up? Um, <laughs> just dare. here to run with the crew. <laughs> Sorry about all that. It feels like a Fast and the Furious movie where it's always like the villain always becomes the friend, like the ally in the next movie. Yeah, right. Like, it's look, like, all is forgiven. You're in your part of the I family. I know we now. had it's our like... differences, but <laughs> I've had a turn of mind, and I actually really see your side of the cause. So, <laughs> if you want my power, forgive everything. And by the end of the movie, they're like, you're part of the family now. And it's like, that guy killed High your fives. best friend. <laughs> that guy <laughs> killed your best friend like two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the real white witch. Yes. Oh, the real white witch, of course. <laughs> I actually, I can say this now. I played a character in, uh, in a one shot. It was a Jasper's one shot a bit ago. I think it was still this year. I think it was earlier this year. He was a blue dragonborn Tempest cleric. That Ooh, I originally Tempest thought, cleric. yeah, I had originally thought would be a cool uh, replacement character if James ever died. Um, I've since come up with one that I like a little better. Um, so I have one uh, that that, and he, I I have one that I like so much right now. He if what I'll just throw this out there. When we get to a campaign two, he could be my campaign two. Character. Oh, <laughs> yeah. See, I feel like campaign two characters is a is a better question because yeah i think it we do kind of need a whole new group dynamic right. uh, introducing a new long-term character i feel like i usually do have a backup but in this case i think we're all so invested in fahima's story and in the way that she has oh, for sure. woven into the group dynamic that it's it's nearly impossible to think of somebody who could replace her it's so true but but i also i I absolutely don't want to lose everything that I have, you know, ideas about for James's continuing arc. But also at the same time, there is the storyteller part of my mind, which is like, boy, it would be interesting to see what the party does if James dies, though. Well, see, it would be fun to see what any of what what we do if any of us die. But yeah. I would want that to have a a couple week limit, and then you come back. <laughs> For sure. I see that. I see that. Um, I don't know. I, I could see, I think there are, I think there are interesting things in either way. Um, it is possible that if one of us dies, it is bad enough that we cannot resurrect. Um, and if that happens, we would have to, that would suck. And none of us want that to happen. It could happen. Uh, this is the game, but we'll see. We'll see. I think uh, that would I, be super fun if James died for a little bit. <laughs> say that <laughs> well no but it's that thing just to it's... see what happens you know because, our... and because you know what would be really fun is if the same thing happened with you as as it did with fahima where you don't actually die you just go to like another plane right and you have some kind of encounter with the old ones but we think you're dead i mean i i think it would be fascinating for fahima um, I think it would be fascinating for Ugo. Um, it's, we're all, we're all having such a magnetic pull on each other in so many ways that if you just take that away, it would be amazing to see how everybody adjusts. Um, and some, some of our favorite TV shows or anything like that, you know, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer was notorious for this, where it was like, sometimes you have to kill other characters to really let this character just like completely blossom. Yeah. And, and that is true. And that, that, that is absolutely true. And sometimes it's a, it, it can have such interesting side effects. James, any... I'm going to need you to go ahead and expire so that Fahima can really grow as a character. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, trigger. That's what happens with so many female characters in plots. I oh, I don't oops. like this. I don't like this. But you're right. <laughs> you're absolutely right. A turnabout would be fair play. Um, you're Just right. kidding. I love you and I love James. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> I mean, no, it's yeah, yeah. It's uh, not that James is Yoda, but um, yeah, it's. Uh, in fact, this leads to an interesting question um, that from David Gen Pro, always with the good questions. What are the chances? All right, I'm gonna try and word this. Yeah, I don't think this spoils anything. For me? What are, uh, yes, specifically okay. for you. What are the chances of James fighting a heroic rear guard action to help the others get away? 
A rear guard action? What does that mean? Bas like, basically meaning like, you go, I've, I've got this. Go on without me. One of those types of situations. Um. Ah, where are you guys? Are you in the mansion? Are you not in the mansion? Did you... Get, where, get, are you, where are we? Did where you get you? in the mansion and now you're outside the mansion? Are you in the kitchen? Are you in the sewer? Wait, what if... Well, I already spoiled it, but... What if I do know where you are? And I've been there the whole time watching you. I hope you are. He's a really good actor. <laughs> I, playing it I off right you, now. I, I have no idea, and I hope you are just... <laughs> Just hanging out where we are. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> um, but I think that the, it, the chances of James kind of, yeah, like basically lighting things up behind them to let others get away is not nothing. That's it's not a 0% chance of that happening. Um, not a 0% chance. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it, it would have to make sense. Uh, but if it made sense, I, I think I've talked about this a little bit before where in some ways, James thinks his days are numbered anyway. Uh, this is a little dark um, because of everything, because of not only what he's done and what he feels guilty about, but also of the 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 demigod on his back um and you know that that he doesn't quite know how this is going to play out for him he, i said it i said it in the in that amazing dream that jeff and i had with fesh where it's like i don't know how this is going to end for me i have no idea and so um i think it's if the situation arose where it was James or someone else and it would allow, it would be the right thing and allow for the others to continue on and, and getting away and fighting the good fight, James would do that. You know, it'd be really cool. Ugo would do it too, but James, James would probably make sure that he was the one to do it. Be pretty cool if either you, James's soul died but his corporeal form continued on with a different character soul inside of it him Yeesh. or if the opposite happened where your body dies but james because of his dark warlock uh ability lives on in a different character so we kind of get both right like james dies but you get to con continue on without kind of building a whole new character dynamic <gasps> I kind of love that. I kind of love that. And and you know what it reminds me of? This is, uh, uh, you, you'll be familiar with this. It reminds me of the Dax character from Star Trek, which uh, your friend Alex, our mm -hmm. friend Alex, is a huge She's fan your friend. of cosplays <laughs> as, indeed, uh, that from Deep Space Nine, uh, mostly. The, the Trill species, who are characters from Star Trek, who have, they are the person that you see in front of you, but then inside them is this little symbiote that looks like a slug that lives for hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of years yeah. that will move on beyond its current host. And so each, each new, it's like reincarnation, sort of. It's a symbiotic relationship where the person on the outside is still a full person, but they also have this like 50% part of them that is an ongoing personality. And they and each time that symbiote gets added into a new person, they become a new person. Okay, campaigning for it now. Character art of, of James Quillis at level 15 <laughs> is a whole other body. <laughs> <laughs> Same soul, different body, baby. Oh no, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's amazing, but um, yeah, I, I, I always, I've always been fascinated with the trill species from from Star Trek. But uh, that is that is a very cool idea where there is um, a piece of you that continues on. And I mean, that's you know, when you talk about mortality and you talk about like what are feelings of the afterlife or anything like that, that you know how we're how we're all just memories at the end of the day and each other and how we're all just stories that, mm -hmm. that stuff. Oh God, mm -hmm. it's me right in the heart. It also makes me think of how we've talked about how Fahima is experiencing her sort of backstory right now, or at least in the first year, year and a half of the campaign. Yeah. It seems like you could, you could, um, 
If you did die, I'm just gonna hang on to this idea. It's just everybody is so fascinated with James dying now, and it's freaking me out. Uh, if you did <laughs> die and you came back, then that's such a cool. And, and and then you plop him into a new campaign, like a higher level mm -hmm. campaign. How cool is that backstory? Like this isn't my body. This isn't my face. <laughs> You can hurt me all you want. <laughs> just come on. <laughs> just return. I've died before. To haunt you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there are other types of warlock. There are, it's the undying warlock, I think, is one of that could be kind of a similar version of that. Um, Maybe yeah. James already made a horcrux, says Mr. McDomain. <laughs> Ma Mr. Mace Donane. Maybe, maybe Macedonian. <laughs> Macedon oh yeah, Macedonian. Duh. That's fine. Sometimes reading. These I names see is... mace like the weapon, and then I d the rest of it doesn't make any sense. Mr. Mace Gosh. Donain. Yeah, totally. <laughs> that's that's correct. Uh, we've seen James at level twenty. He still drops people while flying. Dasmir. Oh, <laughs> First of all, one of them was a monk. I know what high level monks can do. They were fine. <laughs> I'm like, if I drop this person when they're flying, they're going to be totally fine. They can slow fall. Um, and that was a different level 20. And I've only ever said we I've now played James at level 20 in two different one shots and neither of them are canon. They are they are they are just just what if this James uh, became a little different? What what if what if yeah. this, in this timeline, you know, they're mirror they're mirror universe versions of James. <laughs> yeah, it can't be the same. James because no. then it just the backstory doesn't work totally right right and I have well and I also have no idea where James is going I mean people have asked you know is James ever going to multi-class or anything like that and I'm like right now I don't think so um but I we talk about this before with improvisation and how we how we tell this story and play this game my way of is is I prep a lot of stuff but then I'm willing to throw it all out at the table if the right stuff comes up. If if something if something at the table in the moment feels more right. Yeah, you definitely. Know? Yeah, that's kind of how you have to play it. So I I have a bunch of ideas for James, and none of them could pay off because if something feels more right in the moment, then I'll then that's what I have to go with. Yeah, um, and so that's that's the amazing of it, part of like improvisational storytelling, which is we're all kind of finding this out and exploring it together. Yeah. I think it's so interesting, you've talked about this before, where Fahima wasn't as fully fleshed out when we started. I mean, like in terms of her backstory, right? I mean, you, it was like, I think, I, you know, you, you knew, you knew the base, you knew the basic things, you knew what, like what kind of where you were going a little bit, but also sort of there, you found so much of it in the moment too. Yeah. I well, that's because, it, I mean, Jeff and I have talked about this a bunch, but that's because it, it was intentionally left unknown. So right, right. Uh, it, it feels very gratifying smart. to play Fahima in these later days because I have a lot more to work with. Yeah. And, um, you know, she has her own secrets now, which is yeah. very fulfilling to role play. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Some of us who came secret heavy to the adventure uh, know, know what that's like. It's, it's stressful. <laughs> well, we're almost, we, we, we're, we have less than 10 minutes left in the cool oh down gosh. today. So do we have any more questions? Oh my gosh. Um, there's one from Madam Mouse. Okay. What adventure do you imagine the heroes of Bingle will go on after they defeat the Ashen Mage? First of all, it's very presumptuous that we're going to defeat the Ashen Mage. <laughs> yeah, I've kind um, of wondered that too. Like, is she in actuality not the biggest boss because it kind of seems like suspicions. the five the five of uh uh ashen mage urtenfurt yanmo um uh, vic was one of them and who is the who's the, the other one i have Mor morgan has his suspicions they um, might be they might in fact be mini bosses correct i i because there was something that Jeff said once, I have no idea when, nor, I normally have a pretty good idea of when things were said and what episode numbers even sometimes, but I have no idea when this came about. But there was there was one time that Jeff said it that made it very clear to me that the wardens are protectors and someone is removing the protectors, which, and that made me think that, uh-oh, what if the remover people are being manipulated for something much, much worse, which is waiting in the wings Well, to... I, I, the what the Ashen Mage has communicated is that 
this is coming from her. The she mm-hmm. she she, has she does and want she's... them eradicated because they're stifling real... the advancement of right. science. She has real relatable reasons, and that's and that's great. But it, with so I, I think it would be without even her knowing. Does she? Is she being driven to remove these wardens to soften up all of Ein, basically, to allow um, something much worse uh, to come come in? And this is all this is all Morgan. This is a little metagamey that I I think James in the moment is just focusing on what's in front of us mm-hmm. and the Ashen Mage. I mean, we, we've right said now. we've said this before. It's there are so many things, so few like clear lines drawn. All I know. Is the Ashen Mage is bad. Like, Ugo was trying to say, it's like, well, maybe the Wardens are bad. And I'm like, I don't know that. What I know well, there's is the dark what I saw ones. In the deep reef. There's, there's the, uh, <laughs> the I'm forgetting, ones. the old ones, the dark ones, the old ones. That's a whole sure. part of the plot we haven't even uncovered yet. So, right. that, that, there has to be more. There I can't has wait to. to get, I can't wait to get to, um, to get to Thorn uh, after hearing about what is in some of the caves around Ugo's homeland. I mean, because that feels like it's connected to the old yeah. ones as well. Yeah. 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 And plus, there's the whole Aarakocra deal. That's like, so what? Weird. That's a whole. That's a whole side <sighs> thing we have no idea about yet. I'm so I'm so happy we get to keep telling this story because we know. have so much. We have so much more to go. Me too. We barely got into the Candlekeep. De- Let's quickly run through what we missed with Candlekeep deconstruction. Okay. <laughs> um, one of the things that I noticed quickly that that I noticed is Stonky has a last name. <laughs> okay. Stonky's last name is actually, where is it? Stonky's last name is, where are you? Dang it. Let me find it. I'm going to control F Stonky. Stonky. <laughs> Stonky's Let's see. last name. Stonky J Noptopper. Stonky J Noptopper. That is such an Amy name. <laughs> <laughs> They're all such Amy names. Um, Speak with boy. dead. We didn't do that to question Buron's corpse. So I think I think one of the ways that the book was written is that, uh, and Amy tweaked this a little bit to have some fun. Is Buron is supposed to die the second you see him? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Jay so Virginius, did... yes. That's right. So I think um, she did say it at the end, then, huh? Yes. Uh, Chicken Peach, the other names, the other the other livestock cult members, the other Stonkies cult, Chicken Peach, Cow Cotton, Donkey Biscuit, Duck Oh, there they are. Bean, <laughs> Duck goat, Bean. Goat Beat. That's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Horse Egg. Ram Sugar was Stick, right? Uh, or was that Sheep Sweet Corn? I don't remember what she said. You know, I, I, I would have put it right, write it down. How, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you not remember your own sister's, <laughs> your own long lost sister's uh, uh, cult name? <laughs> oh my god. Secret goodness. door. Oh, we did that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we blasted through Stonky's missing ring, which that, that controls the skitter widgets. We definitely got to that. And that was something that Egg discovered, right? Yeah, that well, that was the that was the little the little nut, the magic nut uh-huh. that we found in the thing that we did not know was a ring until we saw it. Um, I don't know that I would have ever thought that that would be a ring. That was a very that was a very good. I think it was the description where she said it was smooth on the inside and threaded on the outside. I think maybe was the clue that it was not meant to be screwed on to something, but mm. it was actually meant to be. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Still, I don't know if I would have caught on to that. Um, I love how right. all Stonky has his fat little spell book with all of these There's amazing spells. a lot of spells, spells in Stonky's spell book. Globe of Invulnerability, Ooh. Flesh to Stone. Le- Ooh, what's Legend Lore? Legend Lore is a cool where it's like, it's like a fourth level spell, but it's like if you have a magic item, I, it's another one of those spells that DMs mm. hate. <laughs> yeah, because they have to make up sh- stuff on the he's spot. Like, Tell me everything about these boots. <laughs> Programmed <laughs> illusion. That's very cool. Programmed oh, illusion. you know what I did see that we didn't encounter cool. was this okay. guy, I, which sh- is also an illusion. Yes. Yes. yes this is correct. a programmed illusion, and we never encountered that. I think because we, did, we just didn't have time for that big of a combat. That's correct. Well, and it's not even a combat. I think. It oh, says, really? It's just a scare. Have us. the player have the players roll initiative. The illusory monster acts on initiative count 15 and does nothing except approach the characters 
on making no attacks and it just keeps getting closer to you. It's meant to it's meant to scare away intruders. Mm. I think that this was probably one of those things that we we were we were a little behind and Amy went, "No, I got to I got to keep us moving." Uh so we just explored the hallway. Okay, let me see what she has written about the skitter widgets. Skitter widgets. Ah, they break off their attack if the characters take one or more of the kitty widgets as hostages. The skitter mm -hmm. widgets won't do anything that might harm their young. So, I feel like my instincts were right. That she was trying to say that more or less as the DM, yes. like they they're not going to attack you because this is happening now. So right. you don't have right. to be a murder hobo if you don't want to. Yes, that was that was nice. So we we and could I, have we could have murder hobo this entire thing, and it would have been a very different adventure. <laughs> I'm always worried that I will if I attack a creature that is showing submissiveness or something like that that they, that that you deference yeah that you then instigate further combat when the dm is kind of telling you like you can get out of this now right. you don't have to continue to fight right yeah we we i i loved i loved uh katie's uh water wall idea when we discovered that water was a little a little uh, bad to them mm -hmm. like stuff like that that was very cool yeah there's a lot more there is a lot more we we blasted through some things but that's cool i mean we very quickly you know we rolled i rolled so well on all my lock picking checks <laughs> that happens when you get a plus 12 to thieves tools um and this is all on dnd beyond if you yeah. want to check it out um yeah. i think it's probably just purchasable as an add-on uh yeah. as part of the candle keep mysteries candle keep mysteries yeah it's it's in the book it's chapter seven of the candle yeah there are so many there's there's several different adventures throughout Candlekeep Mysteries and uh, yeah there's a bunch and they're all written by different writers this is the one that Amy wrote and we're and this is another by the way another big first for us was our our first official uh, uh D and D Wizards of the Coast adventure yeah. that we got to do on stream. Um, whoa whoa yeah. whoa whoa! Somebody <laughs> summarizing the cooldown as Jessica is <laughs> rooting for James Quillis to die. This is how rumors <laughs> start. Okay, gotta watch the yeah. whole episode. <laughs> That's not what happened. That is not what it's happened. What, it's what happened a little bit. It's a little bit. It's a little, I, I just want to, it's a little bit. <laughs> Jessica, wants, <laughs> Jessica wants me to die a little bit. <laughs> Look, I'm an agent of chaos. All right, so we are at time. Anima would be very sad. <laughs> she would be very sad, and she would try yes. to revive him. Uh, how... <laughs> How did we get to all the questions we from the Patreon? Get to all of okay, our wonderful. Yes. Thank you so much for those questions. Please, every week, the, they they help us um, yes. uh, program for you during the cool down. Absolutely. And it is on tape. We can go back and, <laughs> and watch it. <laughs> Next up, Fahima murders James for no reason. <laughs> uh, no reason, no reason no at all. Reason. Just, uh, I just thought it would be interesting plot. for my character, she says. <laughs> so, um, oh, what do we have going on? Oh, amazing. Uh, Thank you. We got five gift subs from which space thank you so much for your support uh, we're gonna be moving more of our classic episodes over to our new youtube page if you haven't subscribed to our youtube page please do so because we are slowly but surely they are very big files <laughs> slowly but surely moving over uh, our our amazing episodes from caffeine onto our new youtube page and so that's going to be coming more this week uh we have our wednesday night show as we've talked about which we can't wait for six o'clock you know the time see mm -hmm. you right here and for the moment, we may have some more side streams coming up on the weekends or something like that. We'll let you guys know about, but uh, I think that's- Let us know that's... if you'd like to see anything. Like put it in the Discord. Uh, yeah. We, we want to know what you guys want to see and we're happy to jump on here and do some games. Phoenix I... Factory, thank you for the gifts up. Yay. I talked about streaming some classic uh, Baldur's Gate video game. Cause I do have that and I that would be that would be a blast. Cause it actually starts in Candlekeep. Uh, so that would be fun. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm still dying yeah. at this chat right now. Fahima plotting to kill Chase. <laughs> so Fahima's like, hello, Calcutta. Um, look, baby, I was wrong. And do I have something for you? <laughs> just, uh, you know that warlock? Just, Wanna come uh... over? What are you wearing? <laughs> uh, I have something going on this week. Uh, yes. <clears throat> tonight... I am playing in a Jasper's game with Ooh, Alex. This is over right. on twitch.tv slash hearthsinger games. That's tonight, 7.30 p.m. PT, 10.30 p.m. ET. And uh, yeah, doing second edition Pathfinder. I have no idea what I'm doing. So 
come support. <laughs> I know, yeah, I've, I've played very little Pathfinder, much less second edition, but I'm sure that'll be fun. No idea. I played both my Jasper's games this time around were systems that I was not familiar with. One, it was brand new that Sig Neutron, the DM, is like in the middle of beta-ing as we speak. Um, and then the other was Star Wars. And uh -huh. I, I, I was, it was, we had so much fun. I played a very, like, very uh, stodgy droid. Oh, um, nice. But I, I'll, I'll tell, I think I said it on stream, but I'll say it now. I had no idea what I was doing. I was just like, I was like, uh, uh, I was like, Neofet, you're gonna have to help me with all this. I'm like, so this is what I would like to do. He's like, cool. And I'm like, roll, and the dice are completely different. So I'd roll that die and I'm like, I don't know what that means. He's like, that's great. I'm like, great. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm hoping it's mostly play. just role play. Yes. I'm so sure. the mechanics aren't don't come. At, but I'm playing a um, oh what is it called? It's a uh, 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 it, it's like a little Groot. It's pretty close. Oh, it's oh oh like an uh, um. Uh, pulling it up, a Leshy. I'm playing a root oh, worker Leshy tonight. Got it. Cool. Yeah. I, so Pathfinder's pretty similar to D and D. I mean, I I think you'll figure it out. Thank you for the gift subs again, Phoenix Factory. We appreciate all of your support. It really helps us. Um, oh, a tier three sub? Well, oh! Oh, well, nice. well, well, well. We have to get some flare up for our tier well, two and tier yeah. three uh, subs. We got to do that. So let me know what you're interested in. Um, for sure. Because I can go ahead and make those. So drop it. Do we, do we have a section in the Discord for suggestions like that? Yeah, we have a show suggestions tab. Okay, so maybe, will you tag maybe that's me? where it'll live for now. If you yeah. have ideas for your flare, for your tier one, two, and three flare, Ooh, tag it. me. I will make it. I will make it happen. Uh, beautiful. Uh, just like we have some cool uh, cheer motes now that I haven't Indeed. seen yet. I haven't seen anybody need, use them. We need to see the cheer motes. The They're first coming. one's a hundred bits. I think you get to just like choose it when you do bits. When you when you. That sounds right. When you when you chuck them at us. That's right. Sounds good. <laughs> Ch Chuck Different those sizes notes. of meep. That's pretty cool. Like a baby meep and then a Ooh, that's a teenage nice meep and then an adult meep. Yeah. But okay. have an amazing week, everybody. Uh, happy Monday. Uh, thanks for spending your lunch hour or whatever with us on, on the beginning of the week here. Uh, we, we love doing this with you all. And, uh, and where can they find this? Later. Visit patreon.com slash the dungeon run. Uh, everybody at the $10 level and below above uh, can get this, um, the VOD to this every week. And yeah, um, that's been the amazing dungeon cooldown. And we'll see you all uh, in about 48 hours or so. We'll be back with Jeff Kanata. It's gonna get, it's gonna get real tense. This last session was one of the tensest sessions of D&D I've ever played. I know, I'm so, gonna, I have to like re, I'm gonna rewatch the episode so I can remember everything that happened. I know, it's been three weeks, um, or four weeks now. Um, but yeah, so we can't wait to see you all and uh, so much more fun stuff on the way. Yeah, okay, all stick right. around for a raid. We're, they're actually doing Candlekeep Mysteries over oh! at D&D, so oh, let's go beautiful. check that out. Um, nice, that's a great idea. This is, yeah, episode two, I guess. Oh, so uh, okay. let's Got head it. over there, please. Uh, shout out our raid call, Dungeon Raid. We love you, and we will see you on Wednesday. Bye. Bye, everybody.